Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Nick. I'm going to try to right the wrongs that were made in the last couple of days in calculus. And I'm just going to do this my way instead of trying to do it someone else's way. So grab your notes. This is really section 5.1 and section 5.2. I'm going to start from the beginning like I'd never mentioned anything before. We learned previously that the derivative of a function gives the slope of the graph. A critical value is an x value that changes the nature of the curve. Critical value is an x value. A critical value of a function, g, is an x value in the domain of g that satisfies one of the following. Either makes g prime equal to zero or g double prime equal to zero. Either makes g prime undefined or g double prime undefined. Critical values come from the first and second derivative. Either make the first and second derivative equal to zero or undefined. A critical value can produce a minimum point, a maximum point, an inflection point, or a vertical asymptote. So there are four different ways a critical value can affect the graph. It can be a minimum, a maximum, can end up being an inflection point or a vertical asymptote. A critical point as opposed to a critical value. A point on a graph that changes the nature of the graph. A relative maximum point, a point that is at least as high as the points relative to it on the curve. Relative minimum point, a point that is at least as low as the points relative to it on the curve. An inflection point is a point on the graph that changes the concavity. For example, this point right here is a maximum. I'm going to use the word maximum to refer to a relative or global max. This point right here is a minimum. This point right here is a maximum. This point right here is a minimum. This particular max here is going to have a tangent line that has a slope of zero because it's a nice smooth curve. This point here can also have a derivative of zero. It's a nice smooth curve. This point here, its derivative is going to be undefined or doesn't exist. And the same with this. How can we tell? This is a sharp curve. A sharp curve has an undefined slope. The red regions here and here. In those regions, the graph is concave down. In the blue regions, here and here, those are concave up. An inflection point, which would be right here, is the point on the graph where the curve changes its concavity. In the second graph, there is no inflection point. It is true the concavity changes, but there's no particular point where that happens. Note. A minimum changes the graph from decreasing to increasing. So here the graph is going down and then it's going up. A maximum changes the graph from increasing to decreasing. The graph is going up, hits the maximum, then it goes down. The inflection point changes the concavity of the graph. A vertical asymptote can change the concavity and it can change whether it's increasing or decreasing. So for example, in this picture, this graph is increasing. On the, on the left of the vertical asymptote, on the right, it's decreasing. There's other situations where it could change the concave. It could be concave up on one side, concave down on the other. An inflect or a uh, vertical asymptote is kind of a wild card. Notice also, if we were to draw a tangent line to this curve, this tangent line would be positive there, greater than zero. On the right side of the maximum, if we were to draw a tangent line, its slope would be negative. So a maximum the derivative changes from positive to negative. On a minimum, the slope is going to change from a negative to a positive. Slope meaning derivative. Continuing. Graphing with derivatives is a simple seven step process. Steps one through three, steps four through six have a lot of similarities. Step one, Find critical values by finding the first derivative equal to zero and the first derivative undefined. 
Step four is setting the second derivative equal to zero, or the second derivative undefined, also finding critical values. Step two and five are very similar. Step two, find critical points by evaluating the critical values into the original function. Step five, find critical points by evaluating the function at the critical values. The difference being, step five, your critical values are from the second derivative. Step two, they're from the first derivative. Step three and step six are similar. Step three, make a sign diagram for f prime. Step six, make a sign diagram for f double prime. The sign diagram for f prime is going to tell us whether the graph is increasing, um, not changing at all, or decreasing. The second derivative sign diagram is going to tell us if the graph is concave down or concave up. Step seven, find the y-intercept. That's the easiest part of this. Let's look at this next picture. Here's an example of a curve that's concave up, and I have some slopes identified. Here the slope might be negative two, here it might be negative one, here it might be zero, here it might be one, here it might be two. Looking at all those slopes from left to right, what do we notice about those slopes? The slopes are increasing. Negative two to negative one, to zero, to one to two, the slopes are increasing. So what's the interpretation of this graph? Please write this down. The slope is increasing. And what do we conclude from that? Therefore, f double prime is greater than zero. Now the reason that we're saying double prime. So you got the original curve in black. The red are the slopes. The slopes describe how the curve is changing. If you look at the collection of slopes, that's referring to the second derivative. Once again, the second derivative explains how the first derivative changes. The first derivative tells us how the original function changes. So looking at the collection of slopes and comparing how they're changing, that's the second derivative. We're saying the second derivative is greater than zero because it's increasing. And this means that our graph is concave up. Every time the second derivative is positive, the graph's going to be concave up. Let's look at this second picture. These slopes, collectively, are getting smaller. It goes from 2 to 1 to 0 to negative 1 to negative 2. The slope is decreasing. Therefore, f double prime is less than zero. Guess what that means? It means it's concave down. Every time the second derivative is less than zero, it means the curve is concave down. So let's talk about first derivative and second derivative and what it means together. Distinguish carefully between slope and concavity. Slope measures steepness, concavity measures curl. So there's four choices here. We could have f prime is, whoops. We could have f prime is increasing, oh boy using the wrong tool here, f prime is increasing when it's positive, f prime could be decreasing, it happens when it's negative, f double prime when it's positive, it's concave up, when double prime is negative, it's concave down. So look at part A, draw part of the curve described below, please pause the video, do each of the things one through four, unpause it, and then check and see what I did. All right, we're back. Hopefully you paused it and unpaused it. If it's increasing, don't draw everything I'm drawing here. I'm just going to draw it in parts. If it's increasing from left to right, it goes up. If 
that's concave up, it looks like this. If I put those together, I'm going to be drawing this. As it goes left to right, it's going up and it's concave up. Number two, increasing and concave down. Well, that might look like this. It's going up as we go left to right, but it's concave down. Number three is decreasing, so it goes down from left to right, and it's concave up. It looks a little something like this. Number four, decreasing and concave down. It might look like this. Those four things are the only four combinations that can happen from the first derivative and second derivative. All right, so let's look at an example. And I got some of this stuff filled out for you because I think it's things that you don't really need for me to go over. Directions. A company's annual profit after X years is the function in millions of dollars. Graph the function. Show all relative extreme points and inflection points. Interpret the inflection point. It is raining a storm up outside. Step one, find critical values by finding when f prime is equal to zero or when it's undefined. So you can see what I did here is I found the derivative, I set it equal to zero, I factored it. There's no denominator, so it's just zeros of the numerator, and I'm asking from now on that you label it as zeros of the numerator even when there's no denominator. Set each of these equal to zero and solved it, and I got these critical values, negative two and 10. Step two, find critical points by evaluating the function at the critical values. So this is the original function, I evaluated at negative two and I got 79. I evaluated the original function at 10 and got negative 785. Next thing you do is you write down what the critical points are. Please add this to your notes. Critical point at two at negative 279 and then another at 10 negative 785. Step three, make a sign diagram. Now this is something that we discussed the last few days. So you're going to put in your sign diagram f prime of negative 2 equals 0 and f prime of 10 equals 0. That equals 0 came because it came from the zeros of the numerator. Make a dashed vertical segment above the line, um, number line. Pick a test point to the left of negative 2, between negative 2 and 10, and to the right of 10. If you look at the first derivative, we got three factors. Three is always positive, so I change it to a plus. And then I wrote down x minus 10 and x plus 2. If I take this test point of negative 3 and plug it into this, I'm going to get a positive. Negative 3 minus 10 is a negative. Negative 3 plus 2 is a negative. Multiplying those together, I get a positive. Therefore, f prime is greater than 0. This is a first derivative sine diagram, so I want to know what's happening to the first derivative. When f prime is greater than zero, it means that the graph is increasing. Then, when I get here to f prime of negative two equals zero, that's a horizontal tangent. I put my test point in at zero. I'm going to get a positive times a negative times a positive, which is negative, so f prime is less than zero. So I know right now this is a maximum, and I know its ordered pair is negative 2, 79. When I get to f prime of 10 is 0, it's a horizontal tangent line. And then at 11, when I put the test value in, it's a positive times a positive times a positive, which is positive. Therefore, f prime is bigger than 0. So this is going to be increasing from left to right. Well, if it's increasing on the left, pardon me, if it's decreasing on the left and increasing on the right, this has to be a minimum. And the ordered pair for that was 10, negative 785. That concludes step three. Now this next part is new. We had not done this before. Step four, 
find critical values by finding when f double prime is equal to zero and when f double prime is undefined. So I'm going to take the derivative of the first derivative, which means I'm taking the second derivative. You set it equal to zero. You factor it. Once again, this is zeros of the numerator. I solve this and I get critical value of x equals four. Step five, find critical points by plugging the four into the original function. And I end up with this critical point of four, negative 353. Step six, make a second derivative sign diagram. So I take the second derivative and I want to figure out where things are positive and negative. Obviously six is always positive. So it's just really a matter of what's happening with the x minus four. If I put a test point in of three, I'm going to get a positive times a negative, which is negative. Therefore, f double prime is less than zero. When it's f double prime is less than zero, it means concave down. I currently don't know what's happening at f double prime of four equals zero. Something's happening, and I don't know what it is. I won't know until I do the right side of this. If I put a five in, I'm going to get a positive times a positive, which is positive. Therefore, f double prime is bigger than zero. This is concave up. Now, if on the left it's concave down, and on the right it's concave up, that means the critical point between them must be an inflection point at 4, negative 353. If I put those, oh, I almost forgot step 7. Step 7 is find the y-intercept, put 0 into the original function. If you do that, this original function is going to end up just being the constant of $15 million. So that gets us a y-intercept of 15. Then we graph. If I combine the information from the first derivative sign of the diagram and the second, I know that on the left side of the inflection point, it's got to be concave down. I know it goes through the maximum of negative 279. I know it has a y-intercept of 15. I know to the right of that inflection point, it's concave up. And I know I have to go down and hit this minimum and come back up. So this is what my graph looks like, something like that. That is one complete problem in seven steps. It is a lot of work. Hopefully this is going to make some sense to you. Let's check out another problem. Number two. We're supposed to graph this. Once again, I got this already done for you in parts. Try to focus on the parts that are new and try to get the parts that we already know how to do. Try to do those quickly. Step one, find the critical values. Take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve it. We get zeros of the numerator of zero and three. Step two, find critical points. Plug the critical values into the original function. So you're putting zero and three up here into this original function using your calculator. And we end up with critical points of zero, negative five, three, twenty-two. Step three make a first derivative sign diagram. So we have f prime of zero equals zero and f prime of three equals zero. The reason they equal zero is because they're zeros of the numerator. If it was the denominator, we would say they're undefined. Then we take our um, derivative, whether it's equal to zero, we just have f prime either way. We are trying to look at the signs of what the product will be when we put our test points in. Notice a negative 4 is always negative. x squared is always positive. So I just change those right away. That means without putting test points in, I know I got a negative times a positive in each of these. 
It's just a matter of what happens now with x minus 3. If I put a negative 1 into x minus 3, I'm going to add a negative. So this whole thing's positive. If I put a 1 in for x minus 3, I'm going to get a negative. This whole thing's negative. If I put a 4 in for this, I'm going to get a positive. The whole thing's negative. So f prime is greater than 0. f prime is less than 0. I made a mistake here. My apologies. A negative times a positive times a negative is a positive. So this is also greater than 0. So that means that the graph is increasing horizontal, increasing again, horizontal, and then decreasing. So what we would normally think, well, this has got to be a maximum or minimum, it's neither right now. To be a maximum or minimum, it's got to be increasing on one side and decreasing on the other. This is not doing that. This is definitely a maximum because it's increasing on the left and decreasing on the right. It's interesting because we got this critical point from the first derivative, but we don't know what it is still. The plot thickens. But we do we know we have a maximum at 322. Step four, find critical values from the second derivative. So I find the derivative of the derivative, set it equal to zero and factor it, and then set each factor equal to zero. I get critical values of zero and two. And notice, it's comforting, that we had this critical point with the x value of 0, and we got that again. So maybe we're going to find out this is an inflection point. Step 5, find the critical points from the second derivative. Using a calculator, we find that 0, negative 5 appears again, and 2, 11 appears for the first time. We take the second derivative, and I got this written down incorrectly, f double prime, my apologies for that. Please fix that on your paper. A negative 12 is always negative. So if we put test points in to the left of 0, between 0 and 2, and to the right of 2, we're going to have a negative times a negative times a negative, which is negative. Therefore, f double prime is less than 0. If we put a 1 in, we're going to have a negative times a positive times a negative. That product is a positive, therefore f double prime is greater than 0. Then if we put a 3 in, we're going to have a negative times a positive times a positive, which is negative. Therefore f double prime is less than 0. Less than 0 means concave down. Greater than zero is concave up. Less than zero is concave down. So that means that we have an inflection point at zero negative five, an inflection point at two eleven. So let's put all the critical, oh, I almost forgot, step seven. Find the y-intercept by putting 0 into the original function. You'll find that it's negative 5. So we plot our three critical points. We got one at 2, 11. We got one at 0, negative 5. And we got one at 3, 2, 322. I know to the left of 0, negative 5, it's concave down. And I also know to the left of that it's increasing. So the first derivative shows it's increasing. Second derivative says it's concave down. So it's got to look something like this. Since that's an inflection point, it's then going to be concave up to the next inflection point, which is concave down. And then it comes down forever like so. If you check out your first derivative sign diagram, we've got to make sure everything's consistent. It should be increasing until it gets to 322, then it should be decreasing. And that's how our graph shows. It should be concave down to the left of 0, concave down to the right of 3. 
should be concave up between 0 and 2. Um, I misspoke earlier. I said concave down to the right of 3. Really, it's concave down to the right of 2. We got all those things, so we are golden. Next one. I know this is taking forever. You're welcome. This next one's really weird. It's an important that we go over it. So once again, step one, first derivative, set it equal to zero, solve it. This time we get a critical value from the denominator. We didn't get one from the numerator. Should also mention for this problem before I get too ahead of myself, when you take the derivative, it's a chain rule, and the inside function here, the derivative is 1, so it doesn't look like it's the chain rule. So we got a critical point in this problem of 1, 0. It came from the denominator. So we make our sign diagram. It's important that we say that f prime of 1 is undefined really important. When you pick test points here, you're going to find that you have a positive over a negative, which is negative, therefore f prime is less than zero. If you put a test point in to the right, you're going to get a positive over a positive, which means f prime is bigger than zero. We cannot, once again, we cannot put a horizontal tangent here at f prime of 1. It is undefined there. If it's decreasing on the left and increasing on the right, we have ourselves a minimum at 1, 0. We know it's not a smooth minimum. It can't be. If it was a smooth minimum, smooth means like this, it would have a horizontal tangent line, but it doesn't. So the graph's going to look something like this, or maybe it's going to look like this, we don't know at this point. The second derivative is going to tell us about the concavity. Step four, find more critical values from the second derivative. If you do that, we get the chain rule again. And we end up with another zero of the denominator. It's at one again, which is good because it's going to tell us about the concavity. So we found another critical point which is the same critical point that we already found at 1, 0. Make a second derivative sine diagram. So notice the sequence of events here. The top's a negative 2, so it's always going to be negative. The bottom is to the fourth power. It will always be positive. A negative divided by a positive is a negative. So it doesn't matter what test points I pick. This is going to be negative no matter what. Therefore, f double prime is less than 0. Therefore, this is concave down in concave down, which means this is not an inflection point. Concavity doesn't change. Step 7, find the y-intercept. It's always easy. Put zero in for your x's, and you're going to find that it is not 9. Yeah, you will find that it's 9. So, what do we got? We know that it's concave down to the left of the minimum. It's concave down to the right of the minimum. We know that 1, 0 is a minimum. So that means our curve is going to look like this. This is a weird curve, something that we are not used to. It's included in this intentionally because you cannot assume what a curve looks like until you do the first and second derivative sign diagrams. One last problem. This one is a killer. If it's a rational function, here's what I'm telling you. Not because it's the way the math people say to do it, it's because I have a heart. If you're given a rational function, x is on the denominator, you do not have to do a second derivative sign diagram. Technically, you're supposed to. 
but the amount of work that it takes to do that is mind-numbingly awful. So what I'm asking you to do instead, do the first derivative sine diagram, so you're doing steps 1, 2, and 3, do step 7, of course, the y-intercept, but then you need to also find vertical asymptotes and holes. I'm going to remind you of how to do that. Factor the numerator and denominator, which we have right here. If nothing, if something cancels, there's a hole. If nothing cancels, there's no hole. And I'm pretty sure we're not going to have any holes in any of these. So if we set the denominator equal to 0, we got x equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0. This has two vertical asymptotes, one at 0 and one at 4. To find horizontal asymptotes, you compare the numerator and denominator, which one's growing faster. If the denominator is, like in this case, we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Immediately put those suckers on your graph. You will regret it if you don't. I have it on the graph for us already. Vertical asymptote at 0 and 4. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And it looks like I spoiled a surprise. We have a maximum here, but pretend like you don't see that. Once you've identified horizontal and vertical asymptotes, find critical values. Once again, well, let me back up a little bit. I rewrote this problem like this. You don't have to. I did that so I could use the chain rule instead of the quotient rule because I believe the chain rule is less work. So written in that form, to take the derivative, we take the exponent, we put it in front, so negative 2 instead of a 2 then, subtract 1 from the exponent, inside function stays the same, and we multiply this by the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 2x minus 4. We change it back to a fraction, which we see here, Zeros of the numerator, set that equal to zero. Zeros of the denominator, set that equal to zero. We end up with critical values of two, zero, and four. Two is from the numerator. It's going to be a smooth curve there. Zero and four from the denominator. It's not going to be a smooth curve. In fact, there's no curve there. It's not a coincidence that we got critical values that were the vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are critical values. So once again, we're not surprised by that. Step two, find critical points. We can't get critical points from zero or four. The graph is undefined there because there's vertical asymptotes there. But when f of when f when you put two in for x into the function, you're going to get negative one half. Step three, the sine diagram is going to be different than normal. Pay close attention to this. I left this blank intentionally so we could draw it together as a family. So we got our um, number line. We have f prime of 0 is undefined. It's from the denominator. We have f prime of 2 is 0. It's from the numerator. We have f prime of 4 is undefined. Here's the part that's different. Since 0 is a vertical asymptote, would you make this vertical? Put it all the way through. Since f prime of 4 is undefined, actually not because it's undefined, because 4 is a vertical asymptote, let's draw it all the way through. f prime of 2, let's just go and stop like so, just like we normally would. We pick test points, like at negative 1, 1, 3 and 5. We plug them in to the first derivative. I took a liberty of simplifying this. Negative 4 is always negative. This denominator is always positive because it's squared. The positive has no effect on the sign, just the negatives do. So this is what we're looking at. So we're going to have a negative in each of these because of the negative 4. And then really what's going to be deciding this is what's happening with the x minus 2. If I put a negative in, I'm going to get a negative. Multiply two negatives, I get a positive. f prime is bigger than 0. If I put a 1 in, I'm going to get a negative. 
therefore f prime is bigger than zero. If I put a three in, I'm going to have a negative times a positive. f prime is less than zero. If I put a five in, I'm going to get a positive. f prime is less than zero. So to the left of the vertical asymptote, it's increasing. After the vertical asymptote, it's still increasing. Horizontal, decreasing. After the vertical asymptote, it's decreasing. Once again, these are vertical asymptotes. So we have this critical point, and we have one critical point, which is a maximum at 2, negative 1 half. Course step 7, because we're skipping steps 4, 5, and 6 because it's a rational function. Find the y-intercepts. It's undefined. There's a vertical asymptote there. If we take this information, it's increasing to the left of the vertical asymptote. The curve could not be down here because it's going to hit the horizontal asymptote and it doesn't hit this in this graph. We don't know about the concavity of this because we didn't do that part. It's too much work. We're assuming it's concave up because that's usually how it approaches a vertical asymptote. Between the vertical asymptotes, we have this maximum. We are assuming that it's concave down. We don't know that for certain. To the right of the vertical asymptote, it's decreasing. The most logical place for that to happen is that the curve becomes more like the horizontal tangent. We're assuming it's concave up. We don't know. That concludes the notes. I want to show you something from your homework. So I did this homework in a unique way. The first page is not unique. One through six, business as usual. Number seven, I did part of the work and then I left part off. The part that's in gray is the part you need to fill in. So all the parts in gray you need to do Numbers 9 and 12 are completely done for you. You might want to look at them. If they look funny to you, you can check them out, especially number 9. Some strange things are happening there with a the quadratic formula. Number 13, once again, I got a lot of the problem done. I'm missing certain parts that I want you to fill in. Notice the graph has a gray all the way around it and wants you to do the whole thing. So you can, can see these problems as you continue. Like number 15 is completely done. Check out the details if you need to. If you don't want to, then don't. Number 16, everything's done but the graph. So best wishes on the homework. Hopefully this makes things that were not as clear and more clear. Sorry I wasn't at school today.